We're going to go zero to improv hero inside of just one lesson. Metal Base Monday. All right, so welcome back. Uh, we're going to get into some cool stuff about improv. And uh, before we step in, though, a couple of things coming up. Well, one that's already active. If you haven't already seen my video on the new uh, Les Claypool signature pickups, I'm going to be using them on my base in this video. But I did a review and demo, and I'll link that up there. Very cool set. Uh, you'll get to hear them a little bit in a minute, but I really enjoyed using them. And uh, yeah, there's something cool to look into. So definitely check that out if you haven't already seen it. Uh, the other being for my patrons. Uh, we're going to do a follow-up where I'm going to talk a little bit more about improv and some deeper ideas. We're going to do a live stream this week. I look forward to seeing you guys again. I'll announce uh, day and time coming up here tomorrow. So if you'd like to get the additional content, the songwriting, engineering, and recording course I'm putting out over time, and uh, some additional materials and lessons, uh, patron links are below, Patreon and Subscribestar. And as always, thanks so much to my patrons. Always appreciated. I will hopefully see a bunch of you on the live stream this week. Thanks as always. Genuinely appreciate it. And finally, uh, I've got some pieces of gear coming in that you're going to see in some upcoming episodes as soon as I can get them in the door. Uh, I know we talk a lot about things where I'll point out pieces of gear that I think are lost gems or things that you can pick up for a steal here and there that are really high quality and really overlooked and are just as good, if not better, than a lot of the stuff we're buying now. I've been hunting down some pieces of it so I can start showing it off and hopefully make it a fairly regular uh, segment so you can see and hear it and decide if it's worth you going and trying to find it and hunting it down in the wild. Some pedals, some uh, preamps, and uh, I've got some bases incoming. Some real cool and interesting stuff. So that'll be coming up too, kind of uh, Uncle McGee's bargain bin. So that's going to do it for all the intro materials this week. Let's get into some jamming. So one of the consistent things that seems to come up during lessons or questions I get through the channel or the patron pages is being able to improv. Unlike guitar players who spend a lot of time doing leads and soloing and embellishments, because we're holding down the song for the most part, or we're doing most of our work in here, there can be a freeze up when it's time to just toss something out there or just do something spur of the moment. And a lot of bassists just don't have great improv skills because they just don't get that practice in and they don't know where to start. Whereas guitar players tend to have a root in it because they start right off the bat and learn those basic building blocks. So I'm going to give you a couple of things here, basically two ideas, and you'll be able to improv right after this by using these techniques and using these ideas, and you can keep developing them, and I really encourage you to stretch these out. But basically what we're going to discuss are two different types of sequencing. There's going to be note sequencing, and then there's going to be pattern sequencing. Let's take a look at note sequencing first. Simple idea, but incredibly useful. And the funny thing is, once you learn stuff like this, you start seeing it all over in things you've either learned to play or you'll learn a song and see people doing it all the time. But so let's take a look at note sequencing. So what I mean by note sequencing is that let's take, and we're going to do this in A minor, starting on the fifth fret. I'm actually detuned, so if you're playing along with me, it's not going to be exactly A. Uh, but we're going to look at our scale like this. So it's going to be 5, 7, 8, 5, 7, 8, 5, 7, 9, 5, 7, 9. Okay? So what we're going to do is take it in subsected intervals. Don't worry. Big name. Simple idea. And just be able to play the scale in a different order. So the first one we're going to do is playing it in seconds. So what does that mean? So if our first note is here, we're going to go to the second note of the scale, and we're going to start on that second note and fall back to the first. So we're going to go 7-5, then 8-7, then 5 on the next string, and back down to 8 on the string below it. So basically what we're doing is just starting one note up from where we want to land, in the scale and falling back to it over and over. So, so 
pretty simple idea. You're just continually falling back, and then you reverse the order on the way down. Now, what this is going to do for you is allow you to play scale shapes that you're familiar with, but start creating little melodic or out of order ideas that don't just sound like a lot of bass players do, like you're just running up and down the scale whenever you get a little opening for a fill. Uh, I, or they tend to rely on the, the Steve Harris style box shape where they just go up kind of to where an octave is and type of idea. Nothing wrong with it. Harris is a beast. But if we want to get into more exotic ideas or actually get into soloing and things, these are the type of ideas we want to do. So let me show you one more and a guide to how to make some more of your own, and then we're going to apply a couple of these ideas. So another one would be doing thirds, and that just means starting from your first note, skipping the next note, and going to the third note in the scale. So five and eight. Then you would go back to the note that you skipped, seven, and go to five on the next string. Then eight on the E string, and seven on the A string. See, so you're basically just playing two notes, skipping one in between at each part. So a couple of strings across would look like this. Back down. Pretty simple idea again. You're just using a sequence to move through the scale forward and back. Now what you can do on your own is keep pushing this forward and find out ways of doing other larger leaps, like say fourths, which would be first note, second, third, up to the fourth. To the next note and fourth up from there. Next note, fourth up from there. So, another set of sequences, notes you can put together. So you can do that fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths, all the way through. Uh, and some of it will involve be really great at exercises because you'll get things like sixes where you have to do string skipping, that type of thing. To develop this and just get a couple things down, let's just start with the seconds and thirds, okay? So that's the idea behind note sequencing. We're using notes within the scale to create sequences. So next, we're going to take a look at what's called pattern sequencing. Now, pattern sequencing is more where you're using numerical chunks. And what I mean by that is you're creating almost a little bit of math, like two sets of numbers to create a pattern. This is really, really common in lead guitar playing. If any of you are guitar players, I know you're going to recognize a lot of this type of thinking right away. For bass players, it's a little less common. But for the first one, we're going to do something that's really common, especially in like 80s metal and stuff, is it's called a four and six pattern. So what we're going to do is start on the root, go up four notes, fall back four notes, then go up six notes. So that'll go like this. See, you get a little up and down pattern, so it doesn't just sound like a scale. If you listen to, especially, again, a lot of like 80s metal guys and stuff, when they're really shredding down things and you're going, wow, how are they getting these long lead lines that seem to have this kind of repeating motion to them? It's This is the type of stuff that they're doing. Now, one that I use a lot is I do what I call a skip over. And what I do is go... So I'm going one, two, three, four, skip five, play six, and then go back to the four. So then the note that I didn't play being the five, I jump up to there and do the same thing based on that note next. I find that to be a really cool sequence, and I find that one sounds really good with legato. I like that idea and kind of going 
Uh, also has kind of a cool thing with, say, like tapping. Those type of ideas, because it just has a very rolling up and it seems like you're doing a lot of kind of blurry movements inside of small areas. I tend to be attracted to those type of note choices. So doing things like that really works, you know, kind of with my tendencies as far as improv and keeping notes in these short buzzing kind of clusters. Uh, if you watch my tapping tutorial, which you can find on the page, I do a lot with that type of thing. But that type of sequence works well for me. So you'll find a lot of these type of things and you can really kind of make up a lot of your own. So if you look at the two we have so far, we have the four, four and six. You have that skip over. And let's add one more inside. Do something simple like we'll do a triplet feel type of thing and do the first six notes and then use that same type of idea like I did with the skip over, but we're going to do a triplet based off of that one too. So these type of ideas. Once you have these under your fingers, the first thing you want to do is one, start applying them in more spaces around the neck. And that's another weakness I find with basses is that pretty much people can visualize their neck up until about the 12th fret. And even though this is an exact mirror of that, whatever you're playing here works the same thing here. If I'm playing A minor, just, you know, another octave. But for some reason at the 12th fret, people seem to kind of ghost out and not be able to visualize where they are even though it's the same as down here. So one of the things to help you get used to making those leaps and doing this improv is take your sequences, go up in this octave, and come down in this one. So say we do the thirds. Now we're going to jump up to the top and play it coming down up here to reinforce that we're doing the same thing. Sounds like I got to do a little fret sand there. Uh, but this will help you get these visualizations connected. So, you know, you'll get used to that idea of knowing to make that jump and that it's the same here. If I see this, I know I'm here. So that'll help with this type of thing of really getting around their neck. The other thing is, is you want to start combining these. You don't want to do just one or just do the other and keep doing that. That's going to get really repetitive. And here's the secret to improv. All improvisation is, is taking things you already know and putting them out in pieces one after another. All these people who treat it like it's a mystery or all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, you can have moments of just feeling your way through notes and things. But the thing that keeps you going in between those little flashes of melodic ideas and stuff are pieces of what you already know. So putting these together give you something and it also helps to create. So let's say I decided to do something, we'll do seconds, and then I'll switch into thirds. And just by doing rhythmic variants and things like that, we'll come up with something that doesn't sound like a scale. So if I go, like I said, go in with seconds, and another sequence at the end, you've got a little bit of improv going. I didn't know what I was going to do ahead of time. I just knew, okay, I'm going to start in with the seconds. Okay, that's starting to wear out. It's welcome. I'll bust into thirds for a second. And then on the way back up, little sequence of the skip over. Simple. So basically, I just went up to here, reached up to here, then the skip over. A couple of ideas put together when you give it some more space, like now it's becoming more melodic because you're using phrasing and you're not just doing it robotic and you're looking for some melodic content out of it. 
So that's really just three sequences. I'm just listening to it as I'm going and a little bit of push, a little bit of pull, slow down here, rest on this note. And that is going to do a ton to make you able to improv at any time you want. You've got to have a couple of stable building blocks to work off of. And then you can keep expanding these ideas. But I really encourage you to take ideas like this as soon as you get them down, run them through a few of the scales that you know. And once you've got them under your hands, immediately start stacking them. Do a couple of thirds, do some seconds on the way back, add, you know, a... Uh you could sit there for hours, just every couple of notes, change the idea that you're working on. And this is going to leave you in a position where you always have something to say. You always have a place to go. And that's going to make your playing more confident. You can start making choices about what scales you really like, what tonal things, and you can start listening more because you're relaxed and go, okay, I've got a bag of tricks here. I can toss some things out, be confident about my playing, so now I can be really deliberate. What scale do I want to use? Where do I place the scale against the chord that's going on? Uh, I want to do something diminished. I can, you know, do some altered scales. You can try out all kinds of things. But having a couple of sequences and some building blocks are really going to basically create a foundation for you to improv at any time for as long as you want and just be able to go until you're tired of jamming. So the next time some guitar player that wants you to play the blues while he solos endlessly for an hour, you got something for him. So it, he can sit and blow through those chords while you noodle for two and a half hours now because you're never going to run out of ideas because you never run out of sequences. Just keep throwing them up in different directions. So that's going to cover it for this lesson, but I'd really like to know, do you use any sequences already and is this something you've messed with? I'd love to hear about it down below. And if you got anything out of this or if you have questions about this or how it's applied and things like that, Always happy to talk down below. You guys know I always dig into the comments and it's always a blast to hear from you and uh, toss the middle bass rock back and forth. Look out for that live stream this week for uh, patrons. And as always, I appreciate all of you and the channel is continuing to grow. So thanks so much. Please like, subscribe and share. It's helping out a lot. And that's going to do it for this one. I'll see you next time.